Hey, folks, it's Rifkar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Boulder Canyon here on Farming Simulator 19. I am just starting everything up again. So I need to start up the baler like that and then start up the mower like that. And we will just take out that little bit that it didn't mow. And then we will go to there and we will press H and that one will be away as well. And we should start making thousands upon thousands of bales that we're going to sell for thousands upon thousands of dollars. And everything is all going to be wonderful and tickety-boo. Except I'm not so sure about that. Don't think it's going to be quite as wonderful and tickety-boo as we think it will be. But I'm, I, I'm sure in general it's all going to be fine. So that one is working away up there. It's doing a great job. And then we've got our combine down there, which I'm just going to jump back to down here. And this one is doing an absolutely wonderful job as well. We've got the AI vehicle extension at the moment running. So it is following the curve of the field on this edge. I don't know if I will leave the extension running for all of this field, but at the moment it seems to be working all right. So I'm going to leave that one there. I'm actually going to go now and... Okay, that's pretty cool. Seeing the baler actually working on the inside with the ram going backwards and forwards, that's actually pretty cool. Um... Leaving giant piles of grass <laughs> in the middle of the road like that, that's not quite so cool. That's, that's, that's definitely not the sort of thing we want to be happening. We're going to come back and do something about that. Although maybe the baler itself will come back and do something about that in a bit. I, I, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, no, what I was going to do was I wanted to go to this one. And I wanted to get to the combine before I reached the end of the field. Which is now not going to happen. And the reason I wanted to do that was because then I don't have to drive on the crane, the, the, the crane, the, the grain to empty out said combine. But this is just not going to be, is it? All right, it's going to get to there. And, oh, 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 no, we might be able to. Ah, uh, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. Stop. Just stop moving. If you'd stopped moving. <laughs> he just kept turning right at the wrong point there. If he just stopped moving, it would have been fine. Are we going to have to... Wait. Is it... Oh, uh, no, I got crop destruction. I thought I turned crop destruction off. I know that we got the hardcore series, but I thought I turned crop... No, we haven't even touched on that, have we? And this is why I think we should have the crop destruction off. I don't like crop destruction. I mean, I've got crop destruction on at the moment. I'm going to switch it off for a minute and we'll see. I want comments this week about crop destruction. What are your views on it? Because I personally, I don't like it. I don't think it's a realistic thing. Um, mainly because if you did have someone helping you with your crop, I'm, I just pressed escape to come out of here. Um, it takes a long time always to come off the general settings screen. I don't know why the general settings screen is such a big thing for the game, but it does. Um, yeah, if you had someone who was helping you with your harvest, they would stop at the end of the row. So basically your realism is being overwritten by the in-game mechanics, isn't it? So you, you're losing your realism there, so you need to kind of lose another bit of realism in order to make up for it. It's kind of my whole argument for having a wide pickup on uh, Baylor. I don't think that a narrow pickup, the actual realistic pickup, is right on a Baylor because the windrows are often left a lot wider than they would be in real life. So because the windrows, the game mechanic is setting them wider, then we need an other, we need a different game mechanic in order to offset that bit. Right, we've got plant withering off. Crop destruction is on at the moment. I'm going to turn that one off for now. I honestly, at the moment, don't remember if I've said I was specifically going to have crop destruction on or off. Um, personally, I think it would be better having it off. But I would very much like to hear your views and opinions on this one down in the comments section. Do you think I should be playing with crop destruction? Or do you think that this is something that is actually 
a bit breaking in immersion and realism. I mean, yes, I know that this itself, uh, I'm driving down the field of crop, is, is not realistic. But at the same time, I've got someone helping me do the harvest. And realistically, someone helping do the harvest would not stop in the field with his spout out over the grain. So that in itself, that game mechanic is breaking realism. Therefore, we need something to combat that, which unfortunately is another mechanic that will also break the realism. So um, the way I look at it, we don't really have much choice in it. If It's kind of that there's already something in there that has broken the realism. Therefore, we also need to combat that by breaking more of the realism. But I mean... I want to hear your views and opinions on this one. Get in the comment section. Let me know what you think. I will read them all back and then be able to see what everybody else says. Now, why are you stopped? Why did you stop right there? What what possible reason could you have had for stopping there? Um, a big clump of something, maybe, would have done it. I'm going to go down and see if I can pick up this clump down here. Not really sure why that baler stopped where it did, or the mower stopped where it did. There's obviously, obviously something has happened that it didn't like. Uh, but quite what that was, I don't really know. Now, at least I've been able to pick up that clump there. I'm going to just see if we can get the other bit as well. I've got that bit. How much of this road do we own? Okay, we apparently own all of the road. We don't own that bit. There's one little bit there that it looks like it's going to be stuck there forever. Um, that's, that's it. And, well, actually, there is one way I might be able to get that. If I come to it from this direction, straight up from here, I might be able to get it then. No. That one there might be stuck there forever. We may have a little clump of grass that we can never get rid of because it, um, well... Not never get rid of. We can get rid of it until we go and buy the next part. But, I mean, that's fine. We can live with that. So let's go back up here. Why did you stop then? Is there a... Surely there can't be another tree stump stuck in the middle of the field. I thought we got all of those. I can't see that... I mean, it's, it's, lifted, it's lifted up again right there. There's a patch there that's lifted, which makes me think that the mower did its whole... Um, I'm going to go crazy bit. Let's start you and lower you. I'll bring you forward a bit like that. And then press H and... That's the way again. I think it was just because the mower sort of filled itself up with grass again. There's, there's definitely something very, very wrong doing that. But as I've said before, a lot of people have given feedback on that one and have said, yeah, we also get that. So it's not just me. I'm, I'm very, very pleased that it's not just me. Now, I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to go back down here and we're going to watch this old combine here. It's going to go up to the end of the field up there. Then it is going to turn round, and I'm hoping that it will be able to turn all right. What we'll do is we will watch this one get up to the other end of the field. Then we will get onto our tractor, and we will unload the grain once more from the combine, this time staying out in the field rather than doing anything different. And then I'd like to go and get our new rake. We will be wanting to use the new rake soon. Um, I don't think I'm going to do anything with the rake until after we finish combining the field. I'd like to do the field first. Then we're going to be using the rake. And we've got two choices. We can use the hired help and we can do some stuff with it. Or we can just kind of, we could do one round around the outside edge of the field manually. And then once we've done that, we could go and bale that bit up and remove those bales then set the hired help doing the rest of this field. And the hired help would do a reasonable job, I think, of, of sort of working up and down the field in order to get the, the rest of the windrows. It does do a reasonable job with that, with the, um, with the rakes and that. Um, maybe if we did twice around the field, then there'd definitely be enough room for everything to turn round. I think that might be something worth doing. I, I, I definitely, I, I'm liking this idea. I'm, I'm really liking this idea. Right. You're nearly full, so I'm going to tab back to this one. We'll unload this grain tank right here. Only a short run now. So it's going to do a few short runs on that bit, and then it's going to start moving into slightly longer runs on the rest of the field that's remaining there. 
I will head up alongside the combine here. I am liking the way that the AI vehicle extension is keeping the curve on this field. This is something that I really do like, is following this curve along. This, to me, is a very realistic feature of it, and it's something that is less realistic about the, um, the standard hired help. I mean, yes, I know with when you're planting a field, you do try to plant everything in straight lines. You do your absolute best to plant everything in straight lines, so you do tend to have everything on the land work on the field all done out in straight lines anyway. Uh, so that's, that's not particularly unusual, having it all in straight lines. Um, it's just that it's not always going to be dead straight lines. Sometimes you would have it following the curve, curved edge of a field rather than running dead straight lines. I mean, I suppose you'd be more likely not to have that situation. You'd be more likely to actually have the field, um, to have, when you plant the field, to, to run it in straight lines. You pick a straight line. And you, you sort of, you cut across the middle of the field, you run a straight line, and then you work out from there um, all the way to the edges on each side. And, and that's generally how you'd go about doing it. Anyway, I'm just going to leave that one there. And then we're going to, you can be ignored for a minute, and... I see, right. Oh! Right, well that is a bit of a problem. We've got two bales right here. This is one issue with how we do our baling, right? This this is one slight issue that we get in that um, we, we we do we do get these uh, the, 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 these little issues like this. So let's just move this one out like that. It's. Simply not going to let me move it out. Uh, no, I don't want to unhitch that one. I'm going to unhitch the baler a minute. Like that. And I'm going to spin round over here. And I'm going to shove that bale out of the way. Like this. And i got to go and shove another bale out of the way. Actually, I'll go and shove the bale out of the way before I put the baler back on. We can shunt this one over a little bit. I'll bring you over here. That one there was just... It, it's its a game mechanic again. It's its not the actual tractor or the baler. It's a game mechanic. Um, well, it's, it's, not a, it's not an intended mechanic. It's when the bales unload, they very often will flip from one side to the other as the game is sort of taking them off the baler and, and placing them down. They have this habit of sort of um, tossing from one side to the other. Uh, well, what, what, tossing to one side or the other, you know, and if it flips it away from the grass, that's great. It, it very, very rarely just seems to just drop the bale right where it is. It's always got to be dramatic and then dump it somewhere. I mean, the fact that we've also got the great big clumps of grass as well uh, coming out from the baler, that doesn't help either. Right, I will start you up and then I will go to the front like this and this one can just, I'm just going to press H on that and hope that it will... Okay, that is going to do okay, but whether or not it's going to be able to turn round down here is another matter. Down over that little bit. And then it's going to pick up, and it does look like it's going to be able to get round that baler. That, that baler, that bale. Then he's going to come out over here. I'm supposed to be heading over to the shop and loading up that windrower and bringing it back. That rake that we've got. A brand new shiny rake that we want. Okay, that should be fine. Let's get to the shop. I don't want you. I don't want you. I don't want you. I want you. Right. And I can quickly dump that rake onto that trailer. Of course, we've got to reverse the rake. And reversing rakes is probably one of the hardest jobs in the game. Except for maybe uh, reversing the four-wheel trailers that the headers go on because their um, wheels also have the steering on them that doesn't disable when you're reversing uh, but it's got four wheels it's you got four wheels on the trailer instead of just the two which makes it insanely difficult to do right let's just ease that back through there like that this is this is looking good so far back a little bit more I uh, should be able to go straight and it's 
just now driven off the end of the trailer right at that last little bit. So I need to turn it that way like that. There we go. You can see the wheels already turning sharp. Just on that, like, one one little bit. You're hardly getting it to move at all. Right, I'm hoping that that right there will be sufficient. I'm hoping. Because there's no guarantee this is going to be right. So we'll stop you there. And then uh, we'll quickly run over. We're up to 77% on our combine up there. So we've got to keep an eye on that one. If I can quickly hitch this in, then I will hitch the trailer on. Then we'll go and unload the combine. And then we'll come back here and we'll take care of this delivery. So we've got that bit to go on to there. And then we can bring you up this way. Back you round. Helper I has a very nearly full grain tank. And I lift you up like that. Right. That's that one there done. Then I can go over here. Get you. And where are you at the moment? I need that combine. She need it to be going from the lower end up to... It's just now turned around, and it's turned around too late. I suspect that we are going to fill before... Actually, it might not, because that's a lot of runs that it's done. I think it probably will reach maximum capacity before it gets to the end of that row. 92. No, it won't. No, I'm confident that it's not going to because it's only 94% now, which means that we can go up to this end and it will turn round. I'm pretty sure, unless it decides to follow the edge, it's not going to follow the edge of the field. That is fantastic. It's going to turn around now. Then it's going to go back again. And the next pass that it does up across there, it may very well follow the edge of the field all the way down to the edge of the field. Um, let's take you out. It's going to stop right there, just momentarily. Start unloading, and then it's going to go again. Like that. And we can follow it up along here. So it did just, just manage to get the 10% in. Um, just as, well, it, it, it got, it, it just managed to get all the way there before it quite got, well, it's, I think it was 12%, wasn't it? It was 88%, something like that. Um, yeah, it, it did manage to get there just. So we can bring you to there. That combine will finish unloading into us. It's 10% left. Six, five, four, three, two, one, And that is done. So that one will turn round. And all I want to see a minute is, will it go... No, it probably won't, actually. Looking at that angle there, I don't think it will. I think it will turn around again. So we're just going to watch the combine a second. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to actually change anything. I'm going to leave it like this. And we'll see what it does up to the other... I, I suspect that it's not actually going to do a turn at all. Because of the curve on the field... I don't think it's going to sort of try and straighten it up and go up towards that corner at all. Um, it will start doing some slightly longer runs down that way, eventually, because of the angle of where it is at that end of the run. But this end, don't see it happening. Right, it's coming up to there. Maybe in another couple of passes it'll do it, but even then I'm not really sure. I can't really see it happening. I've got to be honest. Comes out over to there like that and then heads up across the field. See, it's still not particularly... Yeah, it's, 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 it's fairly sharp there. Right. I let that one go. Let's see how you're doing. You're doing better now. I think once it gets over towards this side, it starts to do better. It's got issues with that bit over there. For whatever reason, there are some issues being had. But uh, those issues aren't... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um... Let me back up a bit. That could end up being a problem for us. You see where he's just gone out and he's picked up straw right there on that corner? He'll go down and he will go round there. But if the bale changes over while it's doing it, that's what is going to cause us some problems. We've still got the mower doing the leaving the stacks behind. We'll worry about that in a bit. If we can get the rake back there, we might be able to rake up some of that straw and move it out of the way. So then that's not going to be a thing that we're going to need to worry about. 
um, with, with it picking up the straw. It's, it's if the bale changes while it's picking up the straw, then it means that one of those bales up through there is going to be straw and not silage. And we want it to be silage this time round. We want as much silage as we can get because we're going to make money out of that. That's, that's what we're selling. And we want the money. We desperately want the money so that we will be able to buy up a new sheep pen. We're getting closer and closer to needing that sheep pen. We've got everything else that we need. We can do the arable land. We've got that all going. That's, that's going to be absolutely fine. But we want to be able to buy a new sheep pen. And then we're also going to be wanting to buy some more animals on top of that. Now, chickens is the next obvious choice because chickens are cheap. Uh, we can buy the chickens cheaply. And on top of buying the chickens cheaply, we can also feed them easily with the grain that we've got in storage. We don't need to go and buy any extra machinery in order to be able to do that because we've already... Actually, no, where there is, uh, no, we don't. We don't need to buy any extra. We're not going to need to go and buy a bucket or anything. We've got a trailer. Um, yes, we will. We will need to buy one bucket in order to be able to scrape up the food that the chickens spill in front of their pen. That is the only bit that we're going to need to do because we can't pick up the food with the fork that we use at the moment for the sheep. So we will need a bucket on there to be able to do that for chickens. Other than that, though, we don't need anything else. There is nothing else that we need for chickens. So chickens is the next obvious choice. And expanding on the sheep. Now, I did say I didn't really want to buy any more sheep, but I'm not ruling that out. I'm definitely not going to turn around and say, no, I'm not buying any more sheep. Because buying some more sheep... When we've got another sheep pen, the expensive one, which is $180,000, if we can afford to buy a few sheep to sort of seed the pen with a little bit as well, that is going to speed things along. It would be really nice to be able to up those numbers quite quickly, and then we can start getting some more wool. Now, once I do start increasing those numbers on the wool pallets, at the moment I am moving the wool pallets out by hand. I'm manually operating the machine to bring the wool pallets out that's not something that i plan to keep doing Oop, we're on almost can i get over to that one in time i don't think i can might be able to no it's going to do exactly the same as what it did previously it will get up to the end there and it will stop and it will start trying to turn and you can't stop it from turning. So I'm just not going to be able to do it. Right, it, it gets to there. It's back out of his way a minute. It gets to that point and it stops. So I'm, I am just going to drive alongside it in the grain this time. Because he's not going to get up through to there without emptying out first. So we will follow him along and then we can continue on with our delivery. Terrible at my driving sometimes here, aren't I? I'm absolutely appalling at it. See, I'm, go I'm going everywhere. I want to I wanna just sort of keep up with it a little bit. That's better. There we go. Right. Keep up with you all the way along here. The combine's still got like 70% grain in it. And it gets to here. This is where it's getting... Yes. It has at long last gone and made the turn. Whether it's going to keep that turn, though is another matter because it will go round that corner once but then it may come back to that corner and decide actually that's a bit too much for me to cope with i i don't like this one anymore and it then will just give up on it and it will start doing really really short runs on this little bit that we've got down here that's a little bit counterproductive that's that's not very helpful to our situation um Let's go and empty this one out a minute. I've got a bale right in the way of that tractor down there. That is going to cause me some problems. And I've also got a bale at 87, 88, 90% on there. It shouldn't change over just from that little bit. But the bit that I'm concerned about is that bale that's in front of it. Now it's off to the side of it, and it's directly under the wheels of the tractor. Goes on round. 
No, he might be all... No, he's, he's actually pushed it out and he's okay. And... Right, wait. Uh, there, look. I've now got a bale of barley straw in the back. Right, we've got a bale of barley in there. We, we, we don't have anything else. It's a bale of barley in there. Um, which means that we've now wasted our... It, it will be a complete waste as we got through. i tell you what. I was just thinking I would go out round that way. I'm not going to do that. That would be a, a rather foolish move. No, instead what I will do is I will go along here. And I will bale up just the bits that I've got here. So I do need to... Go to this one and move it out of the way a minute. Getting a little bit confused and confuddled here with what I'm doing. So I want to move that one up there so that it's out the way. Then I'm going to go back over to here. You are doing fine, actually. Going all the way up to the end of the field where you're supposed to go. This one, I've got a bale that I need to make just along here. It's just going to be the one. Won't be any more than that. I've got a bale there on the back that... I'm going to go and get rid of in a second. I've got a, I've, I've got a plan for that. I've got a cunning and masterful plan. In fact, I'm going to have to go and exercise that cunning and masterful plan right now. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So I need to come down here. I need to lift... Uh, no, I don't want to do that. I'll shove that bale up there a bit and get it out of the way. And then I'm going to go to here. And I'm going to switch to the baler like that. And I'm going to press Y. And I'm going to dump those two bales out down there like that. Then I'm going to come back over here like this and I'm going to start bailing again and I'm going to go up here. I don't think it reaches the fourth row. Don't think it's going out as far as the fourth row. I think it's only these three rows. So there's one bale's worth and then I can get this little bit over here and get the next bale's worth out of the way. I've still got 40% space available on that bale. So I will just go around and do one more pass up through here on this one, like this. A 70 is 80% on that straw bale. I need to keep an eye on that. I don't want to accidentally do too much, but I also don't want to be... Right, there's 90. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to lift that up now and stop it because I don't want to risk going an extra 19, 19, oh no, it's 120 litres. I probably would have been all right doing that bit. So let me start that one and then I'm going to switch over to the mower on the front again. We're going to go back up here and we're going to carry on where we left off just like that. And press H on there. Hired help is going to carry on. A little tiny bit of extra grass has gone in there and I've now got a barley bale in the back of it, but we won't have that changeover happen again, which is good. That's, that's what we want. We want to avoid that if at all possible. So then I can go back over to you. Oh, now I need to go back. You'll ignore that one for a minute. I want to go back to this one. Again, the combine is going to be on the wrong side when it comes to emptying out. There isn't a lot that we can do about that. Um, but yeah, th this is why I don't think crop destruction sort of... like I, I like the idea of the crop destruction. I think having the idea of it there is a really good thing. But I do believe overall it is not a positive thing to go and have. It, it just doesn't fit very well, does it? Um, the co with the combine constantly being... We've either got to just go round and round the outside or the combine is constantly on the wrong side of the crop um, when it comes to empty or you've literally got to sit there and watch it. When I'm doing the time-lapse recordings, I have to sit and watch the combine like a hawk. Um, but then that's... It, with the, with the time-lapse, it's different. I'm not constantly changing between different machines to try and find different things to do. The whole idea of the time-lapse series is to watch the machines at work. Uh, whereas here, yes, we want to see some things at work, but it's not the whole point of the series. The whole point of the series is to get stuff done. We're not here to just see a huge operation that you wouldn't have... You wouldn't want to sit and watch an operation that takes 15 hours to record. Um if it wasn't on time lapse like the big um forestry clearing that i've done over the last few weeks in the time lapse series i cut down a massive area of trees 
and picked up all of it, moved all the timber into giant stacks and then have gone and shifted them. You're looking at, um, I think it's ten, it was somewhere between 10 and 15 hours of recording work has gone into that. It's not something that would make for very entertaining viewing under normal circumstances, which is why I don't do it under normal circumstances, why I do it on um, the time lapse instead of on here. So, yes, I can do the combining stuff on the time lapse because I watch the combine. That's the whole point. We, we would have this and then you speed it up and that's what the time lapse is. This is one of the reasons why I only do one time lapse a week because it gets extremely boring recording time lapse. Uh, some jobs are a little bit more entertaining than others. As you can imagine, doing the timber and bale stacking, whilst it can get tedious, does at least give you something to do. But if I'm doing a big job like uh, lots of cultivating and planting and stuff like that, it does get tedious. I have a video playing on a tablet or something off to one side and I'm sort of half watching that and half watching the time lapse while I'm recording it. So there are people who've said, why can't I record the time lapse as normal footage and talk over it and then also do it as time lapse? Um, no, because it's a completely different style of recording and that is one of the main reasons that I wouldn't want to do that. I absolutely would not want to do that because it would drive me insane. It really would. It's not something that I have any intention of doing. Let me just bring that one to there and unload like that. And I'll bring this one forward and I will stop there. I'm not going to try anything fancy like resetting it to the shop while I've got the machine on the back because I think that would be a daft thing to go and do. But what I am going to try and do is I'm going to try to unload the rake with our electric tractor right here. I thought for a minute it had got sound back, but it hasn't. Um, no, we've got our electric tractor right here, and we're going to see if... <laughs> he struggles with it. Definitely struggles with it, but he is able to pick it up, and he is able to move around with that rake on the back, which is... As far as I'm concerned, nothing short of miraculous. I think that is absolutely fantastic. Now, can I use this tractor to reverse this one back into the shed? It's going to be a little bit more tricky to do the reversing uh, because of the, the whole steering mechanism on these rakes anyway, which always makes it more tricky. And then we've also got the fact that the tractor could very well be light and so not responding properly to the steering. But it doesn't actually seem to have any issue with its steering. It seems to be going just perfectly, just as it is. As it is. Anyway, I have run out of time. I've been waffling on for far too long. Um, we've got a little bit of our harvest left. The combine is now going from one end of the field all the way up to the other without any problems whatsoever. So we're going to go over there to that one as soon as I put this tractor back in the shed over here, which we've got electric um, plug-in over here. This is why we're using this shed over here. We've got power over here, um, and this is an electric tractor. So we park it in here so that it can be left on charge. Just leave the charger plugged in to the tractor, and there, everything is all tickety-boo. And I'm going to go over to here, start my engine. There is that bale of barley straw over in the field over there. This one down here, you can see it's kind of blended out that corner for it as it's been going around. And it will probably end up doing the same up on this other bit up here as well, if all goes well. Uh, anyway, that is all i got time for. So if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Rithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.